15, I got pregnant with her. I graduated from St. Martin, the poorest primary school, when I was 14 years old. I was supposed to go to St. Michael's College. My boyfriend came and said, do you want to go and spend the summer with me? I just packed my clothes and I left, telling my mother that I would be back in two weeks time, knowing that I wouldn't be back till after two years. I had my first child when I was 17 years old. Every year, approximately 1,450 babies are born to teen moms. Simply put, one in five babies, or about 20% of live births, are to teenage mothers in Belize. But it's not unique to home. This is a reality for thousands of girls across the region. But addressing this issue isn't just about targeting the young mothers. It is quite serious, and it is something that needs everybody's attention. Generally, the birth rate in countries is normally 49 per thousand birth. In the Caribbean, it is 65. Adolescent pregnancy, we have, for instance, in Guyana, it's 97 per thousand per the birth rate. We also have in Jamaica, Belize has a high percentage as well. For Belize, it's 90 per thousand per thousand of the birth rate. So it is quite serious. How much uh, does UNFPA include men in the conversation in terms of education? I'm really happy you asked that question because it's absolutely important because they don't get pregnant on their own. So in engaging men and boys is one, areas, uh, one area of our work that we do in UNFPA, especially in the area of prevent violence prevention. Even when we're talking to them for adolescent pregnancy, parenting as well, because in some instances you have there may be a boy, an adolescent boy who may be the father of the adolescent girl's child. So you have to talk with them, you have to involve them, and you have to basically give them the necessary information so they too can make informed decisions. So it's absolutely it's a partnership. We cannot work and exclude them because we'll be speaking alone. Needless to say, teenage pregnancy is a growing health and economic issue and even a human rights issue. But just how much pressure does it put on public resources and government funds? It's quite a bit, actually. Um, I was looking at some of the uh, studies done by the World Bank for the Caribbean, and the numbers are quite staggering economically. Um, we, know, we all know the social costs, but I think a lot of times we're not cognizant of, of the economic costs. And if you think about the fact that um, for the health issues attendant with an early pregnancy, that that girl is more likely to have um, a high-risk pregnancy, a baby that's low birth weight or premature, um, and what that means in terms of the public health system and the cost of the public health system. Uh, many of these girls um, come from lower socioeconomic uh, backgrounds. If you're going to have education services that support them in going back to school, there are special services that need to be built in to support them, and so that has a cost. But apart from that, there is also the opportunity cost, uh, because early pregnancy or early motherhood limits a girl's economic, especially a girl, um, economic opportunities. And, and so then, what does that mean in terms of the potential that that young woman or young man as a parent had um, in terms of um, earning an income? Um, so some of the studies that we're seeing shows that in the Caribbean, it, it represents a loss of around anywhere from 92 million US dollars to 100 plus million dollars. Um, so it's quite significant. I was mad with myself. And I said my world was crashing down because I am not ready for a baby. At first I was saying, oh my God, I don't want this. Why this have to happen and stuff? What am I going to do when my belly start getting bigger and bigger and I can't hide it anymore? Everybody got curious. They're like, they can't believe it. You're just 15. How could you do this? Like I ruined your life. And then it was just no here from there. We have to start going from host to host and everybody has to they can't keep me and so on and so forth. While these Jamaican stories might sound very simple, the issue of teenage pregnancy really isn't. 
and neither is addressing it. It is a challenge because it is, it is just such a complex issue um, and it brings together the perfect storm of a number of hot button issues that we don't want to talk about in Belize. Sex and sexuality, sex education for children, um, you know, parents actually sitting down and having a conversation which is the most powerful tool really, opening up those communication lines with, with, with young people about access to contraception for young people, you know, all that sort of thing. Yes, we want to talk about abstinence and morals, and, and those are very, very important pieces, but then we have to look at the other aspects as, as well if we're going to have a comprehensive response. Um, and so, you know, it brings together those perfect storm of issues, and that really makes it difficult. CARICOM has recognized this and sought the assistance of UNFPA, and to build on that, several first ladies are hoping to use their platform to tackle this growing issue. The goal of the plan is to reduce adolescent pregnancy by 20 by 20 percent by the year 2019. It has five areas that can assist us in doing so. Looking at providing information, services and information. The intention, the main objective here is to create a network of first ladies who will utilize their platforms in the Caribbean to, to um, ensure that, that finances etc are, are allocated to, to this issue. No? There is a regional framework, integrated framework for action um, coming out of CARICOM. So that's really the hymn sheet that we're all trying to sing. And so this is really a recruitment of more people for the choir, if you will, in terms of influential women in the Caribbean who can stand up on behalf of the Caribbean girl child. I think we really have to start moving towards addressing this issue frontally and making everyone know that it is neither acceptable nor, um, and, and it is criminal. We have to address it like that, especially for children who are under the age of consent. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.